Amen. Hallelujah. I hadn't heard that in a while. I enjoyed that, Brother Manny. Hallelujah. This time we're going to ask Brother Chuck. He's going to make his way up here to uh, preach for us tonight. But as he's making his way up, is there anybody who's got a testimony would like to testify tonight what God has done for you? Go ahead. Go ahead and give him a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else tonight? Got a testimony. Go ahead, Sister Betsy. She said she was, she said she was thankful that she didn't get hurt in that accident that she had. Um, amen. How many has been in an accident before? I know I have, and I've come close to death in one. And I can tell you, it's a miracle uh, to come out one alive. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're gonna ask Brother Chuck to come tonight. Hallelujah. Y'all stretch your hands forth tonight and let's pray for him. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for Brother Chuck, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would anoint my brother tonight, Lord, to preach your word, God, because your word is already anointed, Lord. Lord, you said if we would open our mouths, Lord, then you would fill it up, God, with words to speak. Lord, I pray for Brother Chuck, Lord, as he begins to, to present this word to us, Lord. Lord, that we take it, Lord. Hallelujah. We apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Brother John. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise. Give me a minute while I clean off this, clean off some of this stuff here. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than coming together with your brothers and sisters in the Lord and in the presence of God. There's a wonderful spirit here tonight on a Wednesday night. Nothing better than that. And before we get into God, what God has laid on my heart, I feel like I have heard from God tonight. But before we get into the Word, I'd like to share something with you that came to me the other day. Um, when I was a teenager, I can't help but laugh when I think about this, but it's kind of serious. When I was a teenager, my friends and I had a dream that someday we were going to grow up and be famous rock stars. <laughs> and I mean, we had it going, too. We had, we had the air band before air bands ever had a name. We, we had the uh, invisible guitar. We had the invisible drums, the invisible keyboard player. And get this, try to figure this one out. We, if you can, we had an invisible singer. And I was thinking the other day, if someone had to come up to me during that time and told me, he said, you're not going to be a famous rock star when you get older. And then they, but you're going to be one day stand behind God's sacred desk and deliver his message. If they had have told me back then that, I would have laughed at them and said, there is no way that I will ever be one of those Jesus freaks. And that's what we used to call uh, people of God was Jesus freaks. But you know, it's amazing how the Holy Ghost can change your life. It can change your thinking. It can change your desires. Because I'm thankful tonight to be called a Jesus freak. <laughs> Amen. So are you. Amen. And I would rather, be, you know, I don't take this lightly. I look at it as a privilege and an honor to be able to stand up here and now any rock stars that might be listening by the internet, you're missing out. Because this is where it's at. Forget that. That dream was of the devil. 
But anyway, you will get into the Word now. I'm going to be reading from the book of Haggai, chapter, uh, verse, chapter 1. And I'm going to give you, while I'm giving you a moment to turn there, I wanted to just give a quick note about Haggai. Keep this in mind through the message tonight. Haggai's sermons, Haggai's sermons were preached. You notice it's only two chapters long. But they were preached within a 15-week period. And, of course, they say that it was from August 29th to December 18th, 520 B.C. And that's interesting. I find it in. Just keep that in mind tonight. Anyway, I'm going to be reading from Haggai chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In the second year of the king, in, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. I think I need glasses. Unto Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people, This people say the time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And I'm going to stop right there for a minute. We've already prayed, so I want to uh, speak for just the next few minutes on this subject. Turn your blessings back to the glory of God. Turn your blessings back to the glory of God. Now, since I'm going to be using Haggai as my main subject tonight, I want to back up just a little bit and give you a quick history to bring, and bring us back up to where we are. Seventy years earlier, the, the Babylonian Empire had... Oh, you may be seated. I'm sorry. I've got y'all standing up with me. I guess I'm going to make you stand up too. Seventy years earlier, the, king, uh, the Babylonian Empire, under the rule of King Nebuchadnezzar, came in and invaded Jerusalem. And after, when they had left, the, Jerusalem was in ruins. All the people's houses had been destroyed. And even the temple that Solomon had built laid in ruins in a pile of rubble. And they took a lot majority of the Jews back with them to Babylon. And there they were for 70 years in Babylon. And while they were in Babylon, though, they, God had his hand on them. And after 70 years, after the, the Babylonian Empire had fell, and many of the Jews were allowed to, be, to start to return back to Jerusalem. And Haggai was in one of the, among the first group to go back of about, I think it was a little under 50,000 people. And when they got back to Jerusalem, the people began to build themselves houses. And not just houses, they were building themselves paneled, I mean palaces, you might say. Let's say palaces. They were building fine homes. While the house of the temple of God laid in rubble. And the thinking was, the people, their thinking was, well, you know, we've been in uh, Jerusalem, we've been in Babylon for about 70 years, so it's time for a little me worship. And that's how they were trying to justify what they were doing. But God didn't see it that way. God see it, saw it this way. God said, saw that they were, in, they were putting him second in their lives. And God knew that if they continued like this, that they would eventually forget God altogether. Now I'm going to stop right there a minute, and I'll get back in my notes and, into my notes in just a minute. But as God was giving me this message and dealing with me on it, I began to think, then you may come up with the same question as we go. That was in Haggai's day. This is in Haggai's day. What does that have to do with us today? This, that was then, this is now. Well, God reminded me that back then the Jews, they were human just like we are. And what they did, we are 
the same. It's called human nature. It's called uh, human nature. And it's easy to forget God. And I mean, I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but I'm going to go on with this now. I feel to do it. Say this next. Just ask yourself, how many times have you ever... I mean, let's, let me put it this way. We, have, uh, we, have, we live in a time when we, we have to have jobs to make money, to pay our bills, and there's other responsibilities in, this, in the life. You know, it's called life. And it's easy. If you were honest with yourself, and I'm talking to myself always tonight, this is always to me first, it's easy to sometime without realizing it, forget, I mean, not, I mean, to turn and put God second in our lives. It happens. And I just wanted to throw that in real quick. But anyway, Haggai brought, when God saw what was taking place here, Haggai, Haggai, that's a hard name to say, Haggai brought three messages to the returning Jews and to us tonight. Keep that in mind. These messages were about faithfulness to God. They were how God wants his people to bless and glorify him, not themselves, and how God will lead us to, to us and them, of course, to holiness if we let him. These messages were not prosperity teachings, but more about if you please God, he will bless you, and if you don't, he won't, or let's say he can't. And it's not these messages that Haggai sent was not about earning God's favor, but putting him first in our lives and their lives and letting God lead. I put us because it's to us tonight. Lead us rather than us trying to lead God. And that's so easy to do. It's so easy to get to that place. So the message, first message that Haggai brought to the people, number one, was message of conviction and standards. God underli underlines this message with consider your ways. You might say as I begin to study this, I would say that that was God's title to his message was to them was consider your ways. Now reading on where we took left off at from uh, verse 6 or verse 5, Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts. He said, consider your ways. There you know, then he said, in the verse 6, he said, You have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Again, he says, Consider your ways. What was taking place, of course, I've already said it, is that the people were in danger. God saw that the people were in danger of forgetting God and turning their ways and doings and missing out God and His wants. Oh, it's so easy to do. It's so easy to do that if we're not careful. And what this is what God was actually saying. He's saying, give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a bag with holes in it. God wants our love. And he gets our backs. He wants our company and he gets our shopping lists. And I hated to bring this out at Christmas, but we're here. <laughs> he wants our trust and he gets our dissatisfaction. We try and find happiness in everything but God, and we cannot find it. And when I put that down there, I was thinking, this came to mind, that how many times, I'm going to use myself as an example, that way I don't get in trouble. And see if this don't fit you too. We're all human. I have had days where I have woke, started my day, and I was thankful. I had the best, most thankful spirit. I was thankful for everything. I'd walk through my house and thank God for everything. I even thanked God for my water heater one time. I mean, no water heater, something that we don't, we take for granted and we don't think about until we turn on the faucet and we don't have hot water. But I was thankful for that. Then the, the next thing I know, I wake up another morning and all of a sudden, as soon as I open my eyes, the weight of the world just comes crashing down on your shoulders. And you think, you know, you go through the day and you can't, con I couldn't conjure up a thankful attitude if I wanted to. I'm sure everybody's been there. And then... I would just, uh, 
I'd be going through the day and I'd say, God, I mean, I need this, I need that to make me happy. Then I'd turn around and say, well, God, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. But when we get to that place, think of, I thought about this. When we're at that place, we need to stop and think about, look at your, examine our hearts and say, wait a minute. Is God somewhere? Have I put God second in my life? And Even though I think you'd be say, oh, God, you're first in my life always. I put you first. But sometimes you have to stop and say, when you get an attitude, that kind of spirit, you have to say, wait a minute. And check yourself. Because really, you can, it's easy to put God second, not meaning to, not even realizing it. And that's what they were doing in Haggai's day. Now, What Haggai was saying here to the people is, it's not about me, Lord, but about you. And to us tonight, it is about loving God on a Monday morning. It's about loving God when the bills are due and you don't know how you're going to pay them. Or when the children are driving you mad. You know, I'm covering everybody tonight. Everybody, I know someone's been there. Or when the doctor gives you bad news. It's still about loving God then, and it's about loving God when... And it's, it's when we give God praise during difficult times that God is pleased. Why? Because it's sacrifice. It's hard for us to do that. Wake up when you've got problems all around, circle around and then try to praise God. I think Brother Hunt brought this. Somebody brought that out the other night. I just realized that. Anyway, it's not easy. Now, but it means so much to God. Now, now, going back to Haggai. When God had stirred the people's hearts. And you know, as I put that, as I was studying this, he stirred their people's hearts with words of encouragement and love to serve God. The people then began to build the temple. I got to put that in there. But I noticed something in this, as I studied the book of Haggai, that, that God's, not only, you know, God's wisdom is in this book. Not only does it teach it, show us how that it's easy to forget God and that it's important that we don't, we put God first. But God's wisdom, I looked at it and I thought, you know, God shook their heart. I mean, he, shaked, he stirred their hearts. He didn't, he could have, God could have done it any way he wanted to. And I'm not, I don't know how. He could have zapped them. He could have done anything to get their attention back toward him. But he didn't. He shook, he, he, he used love and words of encouragement to get the people's motivation stirred right. Now, message number two. I'm not going to be real long. Hey, God, wasn't but two, story, two chapters, so you can't get too much out of that. <laughs> message number two was a message of courage and faith. Now that the people had their priorities and motivations reset, the temple foundation was laid, Hey Haggai says this. He said, comes to them and says, Solomon's temple would have been also awesome by any standard, more gold, certainly bigger, and in some eyes, maybe better than the temple they were building. Haggai says, and this is in the Bible, he says, Who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? Talking about the temple. How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? What he was saying here was to them was, What impresses God? When it is, what it, and what, what does impress God is when it is given, when we give out of, a, out of the heart, not and out of the lack and not out of plenty. And when it, when it hurts and takes courage to trust, that's what impresses God. It's when it, that's what impresses God. And then God says, then God goes on to say through Haggai, be strong all you people of the land. Declares the Lord and work for I am with you. That's the very three worded words right there. That was his wit. That's wisdom. Declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I coveted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is the was the heart of the people in Haggai's days motivation in ours tonight. It was courage. God is with them. And how I many know it gets no better than that than when you can wake up in the morning and just think, God is with me. God is with me. I've done that before. And you can have a much better day. It's better than wake, it's better than waking up with everything on your shoulders and the devil trying to and the devil he's practically waiting on you when you open your eyes in the morning, practically sometimes. But then if we could ever get 
to the place to where we truly can put God first. And we have a heart that is willing with a joyful attitude to turn the blessings that God has blessed us with back to His glory. That is the key right there to, impre- to ble- for God's blessings. Anyway, we'll move on. He said, in a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations will come, and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. He goes on to say, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place I will grant peace, declares the Lord. This, to, that right there is a prayer, is a, is a prayer of courage and faith for us tonight. God is speaking to us. He's letting us know, hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. As long as you put me first. As long as you're willing to whatever I have blessed you with, be able to return it back to me. He's not, he's not asking us now to sell everything and turn it back to him for his glory. But are, do we have that type of heart tonight? God wants everyone to know that he is with you. He says, do not fear. He wants us to, me to say this, do not fear. Be strong, take courage, and fir- stand firm, and stand for God. And if we want to become God's silver and his gold, we must set our priorities. And I'm stressing this very much tonight. And be able to be willing to turn the blessings back to the glory of God. Message number three. It was a message Haggai brought of cleanliness and holiness. God had motivated them, gave them courage and faith to the people. Then he turned to the matter of holiness. He said, God, God says, be ye holy. Because what? Everybody knows that. I am holy. And I'm, I'm, I'm just about done, but I'm not done yet. I'm going to allow two closings, I promise. I'm closing in two times. This is the first one. No, I said all that to say this. About two years ago, it's been about two years now, the Lord spoke to my spirit. And he said that the world, as you know it, is not going to be the, like, the world, in three years, the world as we know it is going to be different. And that's been, I think, about two years now, into two years, got another year to go. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, couldn't figure that out. I thought, God, what are you saying here? What do you, what, you know, God, how do you know God's not a God of detail sometimes? He'll tell you something, it'll bug you too. You think, God, what's the rest of the story? But if you wait patiently, you, he will reveal it to you. And, you know, I've been watching, and since that God spoke to me two years ago on that, a lot of things have taken place in our world. And I won't go into a lot of detail, but I want to say this, and you all know that we've had many, a lot more of these terrorists. Since then, a lot more terrorist groups have come up, the ISIS and different ones. We've had more shootings every day. They're shooting somebody or walking in and shooting people. Things are changing. And as I begin, God began to lay this message on my heart, I realized then what God was saying. And I feel this in my spirit, and I'm not trying to sit, bring doom and gloom to the church or anything, and I'm talking, about, I'm talking to the church as a whole here. But I'm afraid, I felt this in my spirit, after not long after God told me this, that there's many that are not, spiritually speaking, there are many that are not going to be ready for what's, for what's coming. And I don't know what's coming. You know, I don't know I'm, not, I'm not a prophet I ain't prophesying, but God told me that in three years, the world is going to change. And I don't know. I hope it, I mean, I'm, I'm hope, wish I was wrong, but I know what I heard, and I know it was from God. So now, as I begin to close, we need to ask ourselves these questions tonight. Why, why are we doing what we do? And who are we doing it for? Us or God? That's something we have to do from some time. Are we seeking God to be blessed? Or are we seeking God to love and worship Him? That's the most important thing. So many times you see people, they think, I, you know, I live for God for the blessings. Well, I live for God because I love Him. That's the way it should be. I live for God. We're here. We're not, 
We're not put here for us. We are here to bring God glory. Everything that we do is to bring God glory. Glory, God said, I think in the Bible, somewhere my glory I share with no one. So sometimes we, we find we're human. We make, you know, we, we, we're not perfect. But I mean, how many times I'm thinking, I told to myself too, that we find ourselves trying to get the glory when God should be the one getting the glory. Are we seeking God to be blessed or are we seeking God to love and worship in? And are we doing it out of a heart that is willing to turn our blessings back to the glory of God? Church, it's time tonight to open our eyes, to open our minds and our hearts and know that God gave us all that we have. We have to remember that. He gave us all that we have and wants us to be willing to surrender it back freely with a glad heart. That's what gives, that's what God wants. God told me the other day, he, I was putting this together, and he said, you know, that's the type of heart, the type of heart that is willing and gladly willing to turn their blessings that God has blessed them with back to the glory of God. And I don't know if I told you in the beginning of my story, but the children of the Jews, when they came back and started building these houses, they started building fine homes with the things that God had blessed them with while they were in Babylon. So see, God, in, you, he wants us to be willing to surrender it back freely. Not that he's asking for it, but he wants a heart that's willing to. So then you may ask, then why does God bless us? Good question. God wants us because God, it's simple, because God wants us to be dependent on him, not things. Oh, it's easy. With the, with the technology boom today, it's easy to get wrapped up and dependent on things. I mean, I, anyway, I'll start to ask quick, but I better not leave that TV stuff alone. That's up to Brother Hunt there. Anyway, then why does God bless us? God wants us to be dependent on him and not things, to love him and not ourselves. Uh-oh. We shouldn't love ourselves. We're not, if we love ourselves, we're giving ourselves glory. God wants the glory. I tell God every day, I'm not here for me. I'm here for you. I'm, that's the only reason we're here. We serve a big God. It looks like a big world to us out there, but compared to God, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing, nothing, nothing for God. And God's the one that gets all the glory, in my opinion. Anyway, I'm going to try to move. I'm trying to close, I promise. God wants us to be dependent on him, not things. That's what Haggai was telling the Israelites in the story of Haggai. So now, and as recapping, remember the three messages of Haggai tonight. Very important, very serious. Message of conviction and standards. God labeled it with consider your ways. Then the number two message, message of courage and faith. He said, be strong, take courage, stand firm, and stand for God. That's what God wants us to do tonight. Whatever is coming, I don't know what it is, but I keep feeling this to say, whatever is coming upon this earth, not this church, but the, every, the world, we've got to make sure that we are spiritually prepared for whatever it is. That's why I believe God gave me this message tonight. We've got to have a heart. If we want to make heaven, if we want to, uh, if we want to be able to stand firm for this, and for God, and we want to make heaven, we're going to have to have that type of heart that, be, be, that is willing to turn our blessings back to the glory of God. And message number three, of course, was one of cleanliness and holiness. And holiness is something that we cannot do on our own. It takes the help of God. But you've got to have a desire for holiness for it to come into your life. And one more thing, and I'm going to turn it back to Brother John. Remember, it's never too late to change our ways if we need to. Now, when I turn it back, he opens these altars. I, you don't have to, but I encourage everyone to come up. If you come up to the front, to be honest with God. Say, God, am I truly, seek my heart. Am I truly putting you first? Or am I, am I deceived here? Am I not? And if you're not, ask God to help you, to, make, to open your eyes and tell you what you need to do and make, help you to always examine your heart. And we need to do that every day. We need to examine our hearts every day to make sure that we are willing to turn all that God has given us back to the glory of God. And that's the story of Haggai. God bless you.
Amen. Let's all stand and let's give God a hand tonight. Amen. Brother Chuck did a great job. Let's give God a hand tonight. Amen. Let's all make our way up to the front. And, uh, let's pray tonight. Amen. I think it's great that we have a chance and an opportunity to be able to come to this altar tonight. Amen. And I never want to take it for granted. I want to remain humble. Amen. Y'all pray to Jesus. Find a place to pray tonight. Sacrifice is less than giving. 